Um, so we, um, <laughs> like a comedy act. <laughs> so, okay. so we, um, we take the time to, to stop uh, and contemplate our food and, be, and experience gratitude for, for our food. And we um, chew our food at least, the idea is we chew our food at least 30 times before we swallow. And that actually turns out when you're mindful not to be so much, you put a, a decent sized mouthful of food uh, in. Uh, normally, I, if I'm chewing mindfully, which is not all the time, uh, I notice it takes at least 60 chews before it feels civilized to want to swallow. Otherwise, you feel like you're just swallowing, uh, you know, whole food that's not been chewed. It's a bit strange. So when you, when you start to get mindful, you, you it's, it's interesting what you experience. You also experience uh, something of your relationship to food in terms of your craving, and you know, especially if you have a sweet uh, sitting next to a very delicious rhubarb crumble, that's my favorite. Um, and you're eating your food, and you notice your mind saying, I'm getting through this in order to get to, on to the dessert. <laughs> and not appreciating the actual food. So taking time to, to stop and really appreciate each mouthful. This is a, a practice of meditation, and it can be very deep. <coughs> it's possible to get enlightened while you're eating. I, I believe the woman that shared here had a, an enlightenment, uh, because you know, the enlightenment we talk about are not necessarily the big enlightenment, suddenly I'm one with all things and um, I'm connected and I'm you know, everywhere is the center of the universe. I mean, these, these things may happen, <laughs> but sometimes it's something very simple, like I've really experienced eating this grape or I like, I like grapes after all, that's a kind of enlightenment. And the big enlightenments are made of the small ones. So if we take care, you know, to take care of the pennies, the pounds look after themselves. It's like that with enlightenment. <laughs> you, you take care of the small enlightenments in a day, bringing awareness to, to everything you do, and it gradually builds up, and before you know it, you'll be overflowing um, with gratitude and with, with um, an energy of awareness, which really lets you know Life is, is worth living, and, and it's happiness is possible. So, all of that about a grape. Um, we would now like to, before we have to give, give some time for question and answers, before that, do you want to offer some mindful movement? So a quick, we don't want to take up too much time with this, but uh, uh, so brother, brother man will offer some mindful movement. So you, we've all been sitting for uh, almost an hour and a half, so we can mindfully stand up and just do it very slowly. Stand up. Be aware of the uh, sensation if you stand up. And take a deep breath. Stretch, wonderful, stretch up, touch the ceiling, sky, touch the sky. Okay. How does that feel? <laughs> Easy, <laughs> simple. Um, now, this is tricky with the microphone. You have to, I'll just, I have a big voice, so I can, I can, I can do it now. Put your hands on your knees, but bend your knees, but don't put any weight on your hands, okay? So just feel all your weight and open your chest and look up. Yes, and now you keep your knees together and you make small circles, nice and slow, strong legs. <laughs> so very small and then you get a little bit bigger in the circles. Okay, just enjoy the sensation of your knees. Go the other way. Your legs tired. Good. Okay. <laughs> Stretching our legs. Okay. Now we move our 
hands on our hips, our, our feet a little bit apart. Okay, and this is my favorite one, the hula <laughs> We did this in the Honin Chapel, and we asked after the fact. Oh, I hope that's okay to do that. He said that was too late. <laughs> Said, I wanted to say, well, oh, we ask the Father for our forgiveness. <laughs> it feels easy. So you just make a, a small circle, very slow. Yeah, just your hips move. Keep everything, keep your head looking straight forward. And make the circles gradually bigger and bigger. Enjoy the most important, important part of our mindful movements called Tai Chi or Qigong, is our uh, smile, smile before life, it's a joy. Okay, go the other way. Big circles. Okay, we're going to do our, uh, our torso now, for body. So we, we have a, a window here, we make with our fingertips, from the finger together, and we are Torso, not just our arms, but the whole torso in circles like that. And keep looking through the window. Make it really now bigger and bigger circle. Take your time, nice and slowly stretch, come down. Last movement, we come back to our body and we wiggle. <laughs> Shake out all the tension, let all the stress out, and just shake it out. Body. Yeah. Now we come back to our bodies and our breathing. Put your hands on your pedal. Close your eyes. Feel the weight of your body going into the earth through your feet. Feel the contact of your feet with the floor. Going up to your knees, relaxing your knees. Up to your hips and your pelvis, relaxing. Letting the weight flow down. Coming up to your abdomen, feeling the breathing. Shoulders back, down, relaxing the hands, elbows, feeling your head being pulled up, standing up very tall like a tree, relaxing your face, scalp, the whole head, smiling to our whole body. Sit back down. Sit down. Yeah. Okay. This is what the front of it's amazing. Now, cheers. <laughs> um, I want to say something about this picture behind me because when we came into this room, uh, before we go into the QA, but just because it's a very lovely picture and uh, it made me feel, wow, these, these uh, uh, women are all practicing walking meditation. <laughs> uh, it really seems that they, they have presence and the, the way the artist has done it is very, you really feel these, the, these women are walking with very short steps and a lot of poise. And um, so 
when we do walking meditation, it's, it's really like that. We, we really come into our body and we pay attention to our feet and we're really aware that we're here. And so each step, we're really, here I am, Belfast. <laughs> I'm really here. And we make each step very clear that this is, here I am, and um, I'm happy to be here. We can be with our breath, open our chest, we can smile, and each step we can really generate our presence. And when we do like walk like that, um, it's very beneficial, it's a meditation. And if you want to practice through the day, and this is the reason I'm really sharing, if you want to practice through the day, walking meditation is one of the most key things that the Plum Village tradition offers. Uh, we don't just offer sitting meditation. As you see, we offer eating meditation, washing up meditation, traffic light meditation, brushing teeth meditation, and walking meditation. And walking meditation is, is really very important part of our practice. Our teacher never walks and talks at the same time. I've been with him at the airport, uh, going on towards a plane, and wherever he is, he's practicing walking meditation, and he's really alive to the moment. <coughs> and he encourages us to do the same, to really, to, wherever we're going, whether we're walking to our lecture, um, theater, or our car, or to the bathroom, whether we're on our way to, to back to our back home, before we enter the door and say, honey, I'm home. <laughs> If we practice walking meditation, and it means we walk in that way that was described, and we bring our full attention to that, and we, when we notice that our thinking mind is trying to plan something, what am I, I'm getting to his place, what am I going to do, we, we just say no, the most important thing to do is to, to practice. And we can find ways to bring that practice of walking meditation so easily into our life, because we do Thankfully, we, we walk around some. We don't just drive everywhere and go on and lifts everywhere. When I lived in London, there was a lift to the fifth floor where my flat was. I always took the dingy, dark stairwell up and I made every step in mindfulness. And if I stopped halfway and recognized that I'd taken some steps where I'd not been aware of each step, I would go back down. Not all the way. <laughs> I go back down to the next level, to the level where I'd messed up. And by the time I got up to the fifth floor, I was a different person. You, I would encourage you to make some experience like that by making a contract like I made with those stairs. That there's going to be some part of your walking experience in the day. She said, "This bit I always do mindfully, and uh, the rest you try." But there's one part where you make a vow. So I want to pass that on. Now we'd like to invite you to uh, think of a question. We maybe have only uh, time for, let's see, we'll see how we go, six questions or so. We have half an hour. We would like you to think of a question that um, <coughs> is somehow would make a real difference to your life uh, if you could shed light on this question. Uh, so it's a question of your heart, a question which relates to you, uh, and it's not some theoretical uh, idea or just a philosophical question, um, but something that would make a difference to you, some difficulty perhaps. And we know that the quality of the question um, means that it will benefit many people in the room. So even though not all of you have a chance to ask a question, if we have uh, the good questions, uh, they benefit all of us. Our answers are not definitive uh, by any means. They are uh, the best we offer just from knowing the practice and our own experience. But, <coughs> use my car, simply by um, bringing the question out, it's already going a long way to um, you know, bringing it out into the light when the question is getting, getting the attention it needs uh, just by doing that. So please 
Raise your hands. 